here today to listen to Dr. Nusrat Jamil present her thesis work uh, for her Master's of Clinical Science in Family Medicine. Uh, Dr. Tom Freeman and I have been Nusrat's um, uh, supervisors and it has been a pleasure working with her. I think you'll really enjoy her talk and, and they, the, uh, the work that she's done. Uh, just a little bit about Dr. Jamil. She's a uh, community-based family physician with a, a practice in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Also does emergency work in Saskatchewan. She is a physician champion for family medicine residents and a clinical assistant professor at the University of Saskatchewan. And she has done some research prior to her master's research on a lot of different topics, breastfeeding and exercise in, in new moms, as well as counseling adolescents on avoiding motor vehicle accidents. So quite a diverse range of interests. So welcome. Thank you. So thank you for the introduction, Bridget. Thank you everybody for being here on such a sunny day. You have to spend almost an hour here. Um, so I'll try to keep it uh, short and sweet. It'll be about 20 to 25 minutes of presentation and then you can ask uh, questions. I'm quite excited. Uh, I have uh, quite a few valuable things to present. So the topic today is Saskatchewan Family Physicians Lung Cancer Screening Decision Making. So we'll stay around this uh, agenda today. So this will be the highlights that I'll discuss. So let's talk about the um, significance of lung cancer, why this topic is important. Uh, lung cancer accounts uh, for the highest cancer mortality for both men and women. And um, uh, the five-year survival rate is only 19%. Um, and um, the reason for uh, such a poor survival rate is uh, late uh, diagnosis. Almost all cancer is diagnosed as either in either stage three or stage four of the disease. So then that makes us think what is happening at uh, uh, the screening end. So I'll just review the um, lung cancer screening guidelines. Uh, these are the uh, national guidelines from four different countries. So uh, the three possible screening tests that can be used for screening are chest x-ray, CT scan, sputum cytology, or the combination of, uh, of these. So the Canadian Task Force and Australian uh, National Guidelines recommend against use of uh, um, chest x-ray as a screening test and uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, preventive uh, uh, task force says there is insufficient evidence. Um, uh, National Health Services England uh, do not uh, have a position on lung cancer screening guidelines. Um, CT scan, again, there is insufficient evidence or uh, Australia recommends against uh, use of uh, CT scan as a, uh, as a screening test. And so the bottom line of this um, uh, slide is that uh, there, none of the resources is recommending screening for lung cancer with either of the tests. I also thought it would be relevant to see what provincial guidelines uh, in Canada are uh, saying about uh, screening for lung cancer. And uh, the most relevant context uh, will remain Saskatchewan since this study was conducted in Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan uh, recommends against uh, use of uh, uh, either of the tests for screening. And um, so all in all, everyone is recommending against or there is insufficient evidence uh, with the exception of Manitoba uh, who uh, recommends screening with chest x-ray and CT scan. So why are we worried about screening? Why can't physicians do what they want to do? Um, there are um, screening against evidence-based guidelines um, has potential um, as, um, risks and uh, they, they can be uh, false positive um, diagnosis, um, increased investigations, radiation exp exposure, psychological stress, and uh, uh, increased cost. There is no study uh, in Canada that talks about the behavior of uh, family physicians uh, regarding their lung cancer screening uh, behavior. There is a study in US that says 25% of physicians um, use chest x-rays as a screening test. So 
that led to um, uh, the, uh, this um, uh, decision-making model. Then how are family physicians making their lung cancer screening decisions? Um, uh, it, uh, it is an important diagnosis. It has a high mortality rate. Screening is uh, uh, not recommended, and uh, uh, yet you have to make a decision. So there can be multiple patient factors, physician factors, and non-medical factors that uh, can influence a family physician's decision-making. Um, so the once a family physician decides to screen or not screen, and then there are three um, tests that can be done. Are they doing chest x-rays, CT chest, or sputum cytology? So this brings us to the research questions. So what do family physicians practicing in urban and rural Saskatchewan report they do regarding their lung cancer screening practices? Which lung cancer screening uh, tests they, re they report they use? And which factors influence their decision making when they're faced uh, uh, with clinical scenarios? So methods used for the study. Uh, this study consisted of a cross-sectional survey with two components. Part one um, had uh, single item questions which were designed to measure physician self-reported attitudes, beliefs and clinical behavior regarding lung cancer screening. And part two consisted of uh, clinical uh, vignettes designed to measure the influence of patient factors on physician's decision making. The data collected from these two components were analyzed separately. Our uh, study participants were family physicians in Saskatchewan, um, and uh, they were, their clinical work included more than 15 hours per week. Um, pulmonologists, internists, and other specialists were excluded from the study. There were two outcomes uh, based on the Part one, the self-reported screening behavior. Physicians were dichotomized as screeners and non-screeners, and I'll define these for you in the next uh, slide. And uh, based on their responses to the clinical scenarios, family physicians intended uh, decision to order a lung cancer screening test uh, um, was measured with dichotomous variables, yes or no, for each of the screening tests, chest x-ray, brain <coughs> scan, and sputum cytology. So screeners, uh, so we define screeners as family physicians who reported this routinely um, screen their asymptomatic um, patients with a history of smoking. Um, and non-screeners were those family physicians who reported they do not routinely uh, order screening tests for their uh, smoking uh, patients. This strategy was aimed at discovering any differences in behavior of the two groups. So the, uh, so the second part of the clinical scenario is uh, intended decision to uh, order a lung cancer screening test with dichotomous variables, yes or no, for each of the screening tests in different scenarios was measured. Um, there were uh, altogether six scenarios. Scenario one was an uncomplicated scenario. Scenario two to five each included a uh, patient factor, uh, such as patient expectation of the test, patient anxiety, a positive family history, poor patient physician relationship and scenario six contained multiple dynamics that all actually included all four dynamics that we studied in various scenarios. Participants <coughs> indicated whether they would order any of the possible three uh, uh, tests for each of the clinical scenarios. So what did we find? First a little bit about the study sample. Um, uh, the uh, study sample was comparable with the provincial Saskatchewan and Canadian family physician data available. Um, if there were variations, we found that uh, uh, this study sample included more physicians from a rural Saskatchewan and there were more female family physicians. So part one, the single item questions. So this was uh, quite a finding that 69% of family physicians reported they routinely screen their ever smoker patients. Um, and then the chest x-ray was reported as 73% uh, of the screeners indicated they'll use a chest x-ray as a screening test. So physician factors and uh, <coughs> uh, screening behavior. So 
Here we found that physicians who worked more hours and who were in rural practices um, uh, seemed to um, screen more than the non-screeners. Non Lung cancer screening attitudes and practice behavior. Um, here, um, it seemed uh, the results show that um, family physicians screened um, were more likely to screen if they missed a case of lung cancer, if there was positive family history, or exposure, uh, occupational exposure, or in the presence of comorbid conditions uh, such as COPD. So another important finding, perception of lung cancer screening guidelines. I thought it would be actually good to see what family physicians perceive the guidelines to be. And I put that as for both uh, uh, never smokers and ever smokers. It seemed most of them thought that uh, chest x-ray is, uh, um, uh, is uh, uh, recommended as a screening test for ever smokers. Uh, it was also interesting to see that some physicians uh, thought that uh, guidelines recommend screening for never smokers as well. So uh, coming back to our uh, division of screeners and non-screeners, as expected, screeners indicated that they perceived that lung cancer screening guidelines recommend use of uh, uh, all three tests, chest x-ray, uh, the highest frequency that was reported, followed by sputum cytology and a CT scan. Uh, influence of patient and non-medical factors on lung cancer screening. The two um, non-medical factors were found to be if the test was easy to administer and if it was um, inexpensive, it seemed like uh, phys uh, physicians will order it more frequently. So this brings us to part two, the results of the clinical scenario. Family physicians ordering test by scenario. So here, again, the three options were chest x-ray, CT chest, and sputum cytology. Um, and you can see that on the x-axis and the y is showing the responses for um, uh, their responses to uh, to the clinical scenario. So the first one is showing um, their responses to the uncomplicated scenario and then um, a comparison would, was made to see uh, what they did in each of the scenarios and the idea was to see did they change their uh, responses or increase their behavior when additional uh, complicated patient factors were present in the scenarios. So we did find uh, statistically significant results in the, in the in scenario number six where all um, four uh, complicating dynamics were present. Also uh, clinically relevant increase was seen in the scenarios with uh, patient um, uh, anxiety and positive family history. Um, generally, there were a small number of physicians who indicated they'll use CT chest or sputum cytology and we didn't find statistically significant results. So we come to the last slide of the results. And this is a uh, looks a busy slide, so I'll walk you through. And for the uh, purposes of presentation, I'll uh, restrict to just chest x-ray. Since the numbers are small for CT chest and sputum cytology, I think we'll, we'll not discuss that here. So this horizontal axis is showing uh, family physicians' perception uh, of uh, lung cancer screening guidelines. This first set is showing the family physicians who perceive that chest x-ray is recommended uh, test for lung cancer screening. And the second, um, uh, this group, uh, this perception was that chest x-ray is not recommended as a, as a screening test. And the y-axis is showing their responses to each of the clinical scenarios. So as we expect that those who perceive that chest x-ray is a recommended test for lung cancer screening, we would expect that they will also, this would be reflected in their uh, responses to the clinical scenario. And uh, we see exactly that. However, the interesting finding is here uh, for the group of family physicians who, uh, who did not perceive that chest x-ray was recommended as a screening test. It was interesting to see that um, they 
uh, now indicated that they will screen, and in fact, their uh, screening responses for uh, scenarios with uh, patient anxiety, positive family history, uh, uh, poor uh, patient physician relationship, and uh, multiple factors uh, increased, and uh, uh, and it was uh, quite a finding. So we can conclude that um, perception of guidelines influence family physicians' decision making. However, in the presence of certain complicating patient factors, a physicians' decision ov uh, overrides their perception and they tend to uh, make decisions uh, under the influence of, uh, of these patient factors. So, what do these results mean? Um, so use of chest x-rays, a test that is not recommended by uh, guidelines, um, will uh, uh, add unnecessary cost and burden on healthcare system. Um, also, we talked about it earlier, false positive tests increases anxiety and psychological uh, stress, more visits to the family physician, maybe some uh, consults will also come out of that, more investigations will be ordered uh, leading to radiation exposure and ultimately there is no benefit to the, to the patient. Um, Again, another very important result was lack of knowledge of guidelines. Um, this leads to variation in practice, highlighting the need for wider dissemination of these guidelines, either um, by CME or integration in the EMR. Various strategies in guideline development, uh, such as involving the patient, engaging them, uh, may make guidelines more um, implementable. So strength of the study. Um, use of clinical scenarios uh, in the study was the strength. It allowed simulating everyday clinical encounters. Also, it allowed varying the patient factors uh, studied uh, to see if that influenced uh, family physicians' decision making. Uh, there's research specifically on vignette-based surveys um, which show that uh, um, vignettes are more um, time efficient and cost effective uh, than record reviews or standardized patient. So I can say with confidence that the current survey that included clinical scenarios um, use the best evidence-based methodology available. So uh, as with any study, there are some limitations to this study. Um, the study's uh, sample was small and it was restricted to Saskatchewan. So the results may not be generalizable to all Canadian family physicians. Um, the first part of the study, the results are based on family physicians reported um, lung cancer screening behavior, so which is uh, subject to desirability bias and recall bias. Um, uh, again, another limitation was of the design, that survey design can explore behavior but not reasons behind the behavior. So what should we do next? We should find out the reasons. So this leads us to uh, future qualitative research to explore why family physicians order chest x-ray as a screening test when guidelines are against this practice. Um, a larger study, a national um, Canadian survey of family physicians may be conducted. Um, further research might be done to uh, validate and address the uh, recall bias uh, and desirability bias to, uh, uh, by comparison with chart audit uh, to see what they actually do. And uh, research to s explore whether engaging family physicians in the guideline development uh, process uh, will make uh, the guidelines more implementable. So thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a guideline or is there a screening test at all that's recommended? Uh, there is no screening test uh, um, uh, for from all the guidelines that were pre that were prevalent for the last 14 years. Uh, however, recently, uh, um, uh, U.S. Preventive uh, Services Task Force has recommended CT scan from for um, um, for a 30 pack year history for patients from 55 to 80 years of age. Okay. So, I was just thinking, I was a physician, which I know. Yes. That, um, if, if there's no screening tool yet, I'm, 
worry about them. I'm going to do something. Wrong. <laughs> right. That might be a reason why. They Excellent, excellent comment. That's uh, why the study was done, right? They must be doing something. What were they doing? And the the uh, model for decision making was created based on that. Were, with, were they thinking of patient factors? Were there were there physician factors or non medical factors of everyday family practice influenced them to do something? And the patient is sitting in front of them and uh, who has a smoking history. It's a known risk factor. Patient is expecting the test should you hold off from the from the patient or not yes okay okay Sorry. yes go um, ahead if you um, you talked about the chart um, audits that's what i was thinking too like of the ones that they did screen did they find any lung cancer in the ones that they did screen you can't answer that but i'm just saying that would be it would be a nice thing to move forward and uh, and see what uh, if if uh, lung cancer was actually diagnosed. Yeah, based on right, but excellent, sure. I just wanted to ask you again. I hope I caught it around. You were mentioning something about poor patient physician relationship. I just wondered if you could speak a little bit more about that because I'm thinking about that for another project that we're. Okay. So what were the findings there? Now I can just tell you you're thinking in the right direction. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a very important factor and um, research, uh, the published uh, literature shows that uh, a patient-physician um, relationship uh, influences uh, the decision making. The literature that is available is, uh, is for uh, prostate cancer, breast cancer and colorectal cancer. Um, the, there is no study for uh, influence of patient relation uh, patient physician relationship on uh, lung cancer screening um, um, and uh, I would say that uh, uh, one can think of this that um, if you have a good patient physician relationship um, and the patient trusts you uh, you may take the time and say what the guidelines are and say uh, uh, this is not recommended and uh, you may just go through extra exposure and uh, several trips with no um, benefit to you and the patient will accept that and understand um, let's look at it in a situation where there is poor patient relation, uh, physician relationship and the patient doesn't trust um, and the patient, uh, the physician would more likely to please the patient, um, avoid the um, liability that may come out if in future uh, there is lung cancer diagnosed and, uh, and as we know that it, if it will be diagnosed it will be a late stage. Um, so. Uh, I think it has a huge impact on how the um, physician would uh, make the decision.